Good day everyone. Today we're going to talk about the Jesso theory and its application to teaching. The points we have to talk about is the definition of Jesso theory, the discussion and citing examples on Jesso theory laws, and finally the Jesso theory's application in teaching. So what is the Jesso theory? It was born in Germany at the beginning of the 20th century. Its fundamental authors are Wolfgang Koller, Max Wertheimer, Kurt Kafka, and Kurt Lewin. Philosophers such as Kant, Descartes, or Husserl developed the theoretic basis on which this school developed. Christian von Ehrenfels, an Austrian philosopher who gave this movement its name and the attributes of its form, his most important work. There is no perfect translation, English translation of the term gestalt, but we can interpret it as totality, figure, structure, configuration, or organized unity. The whole is more than the sum of its parts, is its maximum. It proposed alternatives to the dominant psychological paradigms and made great contributions to cognitive psychology. They opposed the predominant schools in their time. Just of theory psychologists did not agree with approaches such as behaviorism, which limits human behavior to associations between stigmas and responses. This perspective leaves mental processes aside and does not contemplate the potential of human intelligence. On the other hand, they did not adhere to psychoanalysts either, seeing people as passive agents without willpower. This particular focus was a breath of fresh air and allowed people who did not feel represented by the main currents of psychology to find an alternative. The human mind gives an organization or pattern to the environmental world revealed to the organism through sense perception. So the first just of theory law is the law of pregnancy. It basically says that we simplify what we perceive and prefer simplicity. Now look at this question. Which is correct? 3 plus 5 is equals to 9. Or 3 plus 5 are equals to 9. I will give you at least 10 seconds to choose your answer. Have you figured out your answer? So, the correct answer is, both are wrong. Because 3 plus 5 is equals to 8. This is what is said in the first law, that in this particular problem, we saw it as simply a grammatical error. But, in reality, it is also a mathematical error. P, our brains choose to simplify the problems that we face. Now, moving on to the second just of theory law. It is the figure ground law. It simply says that it is impossible to perceive two things at once. On the first picture, on the left, we see two people staring at each other. Now on the second picture from the left, we see a a cup. Now on the third picture, we see both, but what we see is one object at a time. If we see a cup, we are focused on that cup. But if we see two people, we're also focused on that two people. 
like we cannot focus on two elements at once now on the third theory law is the law of proximity the elements closest to each other tend to form a group as if they were one set now look at this group of people we see that this three people are closer to each other so we think that they are friends and that they are a group of people that are close to each other as opposed to the one person that is behind the group and that is not close within the proximity towards the other three people now the fourth theory law is the law of similarity similar figures seem to have the same shape a good example of this are trees we all know that trees are comes in different forms in different sizes in different colors of leaves even but we know that a tree with different form or different sizes is same as the tree with another color or another form. We see them as a whole that they are all trees, even if they don't cut, they don't come in the same forms. The fifth Jessel theory law is the common fate law. Elements that seem to move together towards a certain orientation are perceived as a whole. If you see people lining up at the restaurant, you see them as a whole. You see them as customers of this particular restaurant. You don't see them as individual people you can you might choose to but if you only see them across the street you will see them as a whole that these people have one goal and they are seen as a whole that moves toward that goal now the sixth just so theory law is the law of closure we tend to mentally close the contours to simplify reality. If you see a group of children in a school at their playground, you see them as a group of children who are within the same, the same school or the same set of classroom. You don't see them as this one is six years old, this one is seven years old, or this one is named Adam, or this one is named Anne. Because when you see them, when you perceive them in the playground, you see them as friends or classmates, and you see them as a whole, as a group. Now, the last theory of just so theory law is the law of good continuity it says that we pay more attention to the characteristics of a stimulus that allows us to perceive a smooth continuity for example this london street sign we see that even though the a part of the sign is totally covered or destroyed we still know what letter is originally in it we we still know that it is the letter p because it makes up a word photoshop that this says that our brain is good at figuring out continuity that we see patterns and we know how to connect the dots 
For the Gestalt Theory Law, learning is the organization and reorganization of behavior which arises from the interaction of a maturing organism and its environment. It is the bringing about through this interaction of new forms of perception, imagination, motor coordination, and other organic behavior. Now, how do we apply this theory in teaching? The first one is the lesson continuity. The lesson must be understood as a whole and in relation with each other through patterns. So, if you're making a lesson plan, you must you must connect the different lessons to, to each other. This makes it easier for children to understand it. Now, if you're teaching the lesson on the first day and you will continue it on the second day, it is easier for the children to understand the lesson if they're connected to each other or if there is a pattern to it like the children would not see it would not see a lesson as an individual but but as a whole as the gestalt theory implies now the second the second way we can apply this the gestalt theory in teaching is less is more in communicating ideas you must stay within the focus of your main point now if you're explaining something if you're communicating something to someone you must focus on your main point like do not dwell away from your main point because this makes it harder for you to be understood Now the third way we can apply the Gesso theory is set goals and obstacles for students. This will encourage insights and problem solving. Because as the Gesso theory applies that when a group of people has the same goal, they can achieve it through teamwork and through problem solving. If you set the goal for the children, they will acquire a sense of leadership and awareness on how to handle certain obstacles that they can move toward as a group as a group towards their goal now the fourth way is to get creative since the justo theory law is mainly about perception how we perceive things how we look at things you must the teacher must acquire this certain creativeness on catching the perception of his or her student catch the student's attention with thought-provoking puzzles or perceptive lessons you can give them certain puzzles that will that will help them use their brain and their perception. Now, the fifth way that we can apply the Gesso theory in teaching is that we must treat our students as a whole. A holistic approach is needed. The, comple the complexity of the human mind cannot be reduced. Now, when we see the students' um, growth, we must see them as a whole. Like, we cannot focus on their failures. That we must see them as an individual that is going towards a certain goal and as a whole that their accomplishment must be treated as a whole that their 
failure is much less than their accomplishments. Now, the Gesso Theory Therapy also tells us that we must promote growth and awareness on the students or even within ourselves. The Gesso Theory Therapy intention is for us to grow personally and have a clear identity. We must derive awareness in knowing that our essence or our being is not judged only by one day, by yesterday or tomorrow, that we should judge ourselves and our accomplishments and our failures and our growth throughout our whole life as a whole. Now, I will leave you with this very beautiful quote by Fritz Perls, who is the founder of the Jessel Theory Therapy. I do what I do, and you do what you do. I am not in this world to meet your expectations, nor are you in this world to meet my expectations. You are you, and I am I. And if by chance we meet, it will be wonderful. If not, nothing can be done. So thank you for giving your focus on this presentation.